Yeah, yeah. Long way from that west side. No way, no way, no way. I just wanna make love. I just wanna make peace. I just want to stay free, yeah. Welcome, welcome, everybody, and uh, to the YouTube page, uh, Fruit Up with Bobby Smith. I am honored, honored, and thrilled to have a friend of mine, a beautiful sister, um, one of my original companions, and uh, she's here with us today to share her story, her journey, and everything she's got going on. Welcome to the show, Tiff Moore. How you doing, sis? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on your platform. I really appreciate it. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you for being here. Um, I just want everybody to know um, when I first got back onto social media, Tiff is one of the first people I uh, actually interacted with. And um, we 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 hit it off. And, and we write by each other. I'm in Toledo. She up, up the street of Detroit, somewhere near there. And um, it's, it's been a beautiful relationship. So we just want to talk about where you come from first, because, um, you know, we got a new platform here. You know, a lot of new subscribers, a lot of new people joining our journeys. And uh, we originally did an interview uh, in the Facebook group, uh, Plant Based Insanity, was it? Yeah, yeah. Like, like in November, I believe. And um, we've, we've come a long way since then. So. Uh, first, if you don't mind just telling the people a little bit about your background, where you come from, a little bit about your story before we get into uh, what you got going on. Oh, yeah. So uh, once again, thank you so much for inviting me onto your platform. I truly appreciate it. So you guys, my name is Tiffany. Um, everyone calls me Tiff. Um, I was a little bit about me real, real brief, how I ended up getting into the whole health journey and being health conscious and learning my body. I was diagnosed with MS, uh, that's multiple sclerosis, back in 2019. Um, before then, I started feeling symptoms in 2017. I ignored them. I thought, you know, hey, my body is going to get through it, blah, blah, blah. Um, it ended up getting worse to the point where I thought I had a stroke. Um, so I went to the emergency room, of course, and they were like, you need to go see a neurologist like ASAP. Went to see a neurologist. That's when they confirmed that it was indeed um, MS. Um, I instantly got on to Sabri, which was like a monthly injection. I did that for a total of six months. Uh, within that six month time frame, they gave me another MRI, MRI in the three months of me being on a um, to Sabri. And I had another relapse. And um, once that happened, after I was promised that, you know, I wouldn't suffer anymore and I was going to be better and blah, 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 I still had the relapse. And I was like, you know what? Let me try to go the natural route, which is when I discovered Dr. Sabi. Um, and once I discovered Dr. Sabi and he started talking about how he, you know, healed HIV and sickle cell anemia and this, this and that, I was like, from doing what? fruits and vegetables <laughs> no nah, no way I was never eating fruits and vegetables first and foremost I was never drinking the water you know what I'm saying I would sit here and, and have steak and potatoes and, and eggs for breakfast cheesecake for breakfast hot Cheetos for snacks hot fries honey buns all of that um, Pepsi two liters of Pepsi Coca-Cola Sprite whatever I wanted I would have it and go to sleep right after eating all of that stuff so coming to where I am now, no wonder why I was so sick and suffering from dizziness and fatigue and barely could fucking walk and things like that. Like, mm. yeah. So here I am to now 2023. I no longer am on any medications. Like I said, you guys, it only lasted for the six months before I realized, mm -mm. well, three months into me being on a medication, I realized uh -uh, something ain't working. And I finished up the rest of the three months and went full force ahead, had another MRI two months after I finished the medications and I was stable, no new lesions. And by then I had already changed my lifestyle. And uh, from there on on, they told me like, since you don't want to take the medications, don't come back no more. And I said, bitch, I won't. Bye. Mm. Mm. And never look back. Never look back. And you know what? Um, I've heard you tell your story before. 
Like, but when you were like eating bad and stuff, were you drinking and doing any drugs or anything? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was a turn up queen. I'm talking about you sit here and you come to my house, trust and believe we got bottles on deck. Mm. I'm talking about shots of 1800s, shots of to whatever you wanted. Hennessy was my fave, 1738. Mm. Just a typical turn up. Here come the weekend. I'm about to get it in. I thought it was cute. We out there barbecuing. We playing cards. We doing this. We doing mm. that. Just the just the, the the what I thought was norm. You know what I'm saying? I would smoke weed whenever I felt like it. Um, I wasn't a heavy smoker because I didn't like the way it made me feel. I was super like paranoid with the shit. Mm. But yeah, I was the mm -hmm, come over to the house. We about to turn up. Mm. I bet yep. do do people do people miss that Tiff? I believe so. Cause a lot of people that I used to interact with, I don't. Yeah, and they still turning up. Mm hmm Yeah. And they yeah. sit here, they might reach out to me every once in a while and be like, Oh, your juice looks so good. Oh, one day I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. But as far as us kicking it on that level, nah, it does not go down because they're like she don't fit in. I don't want to fit in. And I mm. kind of don't want to be around that because we don't have really anything in common no more. We cool. I still love you, but we don't really have nothing in common no more. And the right. fact that I'm watching you purposely poison yourself now and you hear what I've personally been through is like a slap in the face because it's like you ain't gonna really believe that something can happen to you and you can get sick off this shit until it actually happens. And that's why I'm trying to prevent most people that I love to stop doing it because you sit here, your cause, you only get one body. Right. You only get one shot at this shit because one shit hit the fan and then, and then what? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then you're going to be like, oh my God, now what am I supposed to do? Now you're afraid and lonely and lost and you're going to end up even more sick because they're going to feed you what you believe is going to help you because guess what it happened to me mm. Mm. it happened how, to me how, how did family and friends react to you when you were sick like when you first found out you were sick and you became because i know i'm pretty sure you became different once you were sick um or did you continue the bad habit I, to be honest, I continued the bad habits for about three months mm. because remember, I was still on the medications and things. I was still getting the, the monthly injections or whatever. So I was still doing that. And because the doctor guaranteed me that the shit was going to work in that diet, she told me flat out. She was like, I mean, yeah, I would basically recommend you include in fruits and vegetables and stuff like that in your diet, but your symptoms will never go away. And the medication is to only slow down the progression, but your symptoms will never go away. So I thought in my mind, well, fuck it then. What's the point? You know what mm. I'm saying? But once that relapse happened and the MRI showed that the relapse happened and I had new lesions on my neck, I was like, you guaranteed me that this medication was going to stop the progression. But progression to me is, is more new lesions. That's progression, bitch, because now something is there on my body that wasn't there at first. Right. So make it make sense. But then I stopped eating the bad foods and no more new lesions. And that's still not good enough for you. And you tell me don't come back. Well, you must know something because uh, if it's so aggressive, why wouldn't I? Why, why can't you keep an eye out on me? You know what I'm saying? You could at least be like, OK, well, we'll monitor this every so often or whenever you feel like you need to um, come out and see me or you want to talk or whatever, I'm here. No, she didn't even say that. So from then, from that moment on, I was like, damn, I didn't, I can change some shit. I can change the game because I just proved literally and had the MRI to back the shit up. That what I'm doing is correct and it's proven that it can stop the progression. Because the progression is what? The more lesions, right? That's what's tearing, the shit, tearing me up is the lesions, right? But the fact that I didn't have any more lesions and all I did was change what I was eating. Mm. Change what I was eating and no more new lesions. But when I was eating bad, I had new lesions. 
That's a simple, simple. Yeah, yeah. There's a negotiating that. I mean, like, so when you did find out that you were sick, right? What mm -hmm. triggered you to what? What was the thing to say? I need to stop uh, eating what I'm eating and change what I'm eating. After that MRI showed more new lesions. That so you already knew it. It was what you were eating. Yep. Mm. Really yep. Cool. And then that's when I just started doing more and more research about uh, what causes inflammation. You know what I'm saying? And they meat, dairy, and this. And I'm like, meat, even chicken. Yeah. Hell yeah. Even fish. Yes, even fish. It don't matter if it's farm raised. It don't matter if it's whatever you think it is. Uh, no, it causes inflammation. It causes this ease it brings the body this ease and it and I just started putting more and more and more and more and more of the pieces together and people thought I was crazy I got laughed at hmm. I got told uh I don't want you to be worse off than what you already are people that I personally knew you know what I'm saying people that I, but that I really didn't expect the shit to come from is who it came from hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's how it be. That's how it be. Now, now that you cured yourself, you would say, would you say that you've cured yourself? Oh, not. I wouldn't even say the word cure because I don't believe in cure. I healed myself mm. from going just from simply the pain that I was experiencing day in, day out, nonstop. Is that how I feel now? This shit disappeared. I, you know, and I, I'm, I don't even want to say it disappeared. It stopped because I stopped feeding it. I stopped mm. feeding the bad cells. I stopped feeding the bad, the you know, making all of the cells and stuff combine with each other by with all of the gluten and all of the the fats. And I'm talking about the bad fats now. All of the the oily foods, the hot Cheetos, the dairy, the the starch, the all of this stuff compromise my body it compromised my system and people don't want to accept the fact that what you put into your body some way somehow is going to affect how you feel daily and it does not take long you can literally eat a cheeseburger and you're going to start to feel some type of way right. it doesn't matter if you sit here and you ready to take a nap what you sleepy for you shouldn't be sleepy after you get done eating something you should want to for instance, yesterday, what did I have? I had the, the bowl of grapes. When I tell you, I ended up mop, mopping my floor, detail cleaning my house, lit candles, just off some damn grapes. It felt like I could not sit the fuck down. Yes. That's how you should want to feel. Yeah. And 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 people, you you over exaggerate. No, bitch, once you get on this level compared to how you used to feel, you gonna feel the same way. Like, why do I feel like I'm like you're gonna feel crackhead vibes <laughs> you're gonna feel like a crackhead <laughs> that's a fact that's a and fact. i ain't never tried this shit before but i can just imagine just when i watch the crackheads and how they moving around and can't sit still yeah that's that's what the the, the power of fruits do to you because all of that carb and all of that sugar we feed off of that mm -hmm. and you can feel it as it when it come in like the the burst, like I when I was especially when I was mono eating, I want to get mm -hmm. to that. I mm -hmm. had burst of energy. Um, when you 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 were involved in the seven day mono eating challenge with the oranges or the citrus or whatever we had yeah. in January. Mm -hmm. So, um, talk a little bit about that before we talk about what you eating and what you just did for yourself. Okay. how was that experience? So that seven day. <laughs> experience of just eating <laughs> <laughs> nothing but oranges I thank you for that because that right mm. there was a huge eye-opener for me you already know that it was days where I was like I ain't had no bowel movement today y'all mm. like what the fuck is going on you know what I'm saying and that right there let me know that bitch you still got some digestive issues going on mm. you know what I'm saying right. so once again, that challenge for me, it was it was a definitely a huge eye opener 
Mm. And a huge challenge because I experience fatigue. I experience um, just some days I did have a burst of energy. Some days it was like, I don't even want to eat the shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some days it was like, I got to stuff my face with it. You know what I'm saying? And then some days it was like, okay, where you had this, this big old detox release. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, that was nasty. But then the next day it come along and nothing would happen. And it's like, that made me go into further research. Like, okay, am I not getting enough fiber? Am I eating too much fiber? You know what I'm saying? So Mm. that right there was like, hmm, first and foremost, Tiffany, you ain't never consumed this much fiber all at once like this. So your Mm. digestive system took a hard hit first. Secondly, are you absorbing all of the fiber? Mm. So it made me dig further, further, further into more research, which led me into where I am today. I am now on day 22 of no cooked foods. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. (laughs) Never done this before. Mm. Never done this before. The longest I went without anything cooked was seven days. And seven days compared to 22 days is lightweight because I'm like, shit, seven days. I I can do that. It's a huge difference. And out of the 22 days, which today is 22, I did 15 days of nothing but juicing. Mm. nothing mm. but juicing and even with the whole juicing um i experienced some crazy stuff i released a parasite really um i did mm. i did and i had to reach out i think like day day 13 or something i had had it i reached out to jenny and i was like listen I know we won't really know each other like that, but I know that you did an extensive juice cleanse and I need your help right now. Like I need your help. Mm. I am ready to give up. I said, I have not had a bowel movement in a whole day. And even then when I was having my bowel movements, I'm noticing you, it don't matter if you sit here and have three or four bowel movements a day. It's about how it looks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's going to show and tell whether or not you're truly constipated. It's going to show whether you are truly constipated, truly dehydrated. It's going to show all that. Yeah. And and the the broken up pieces of bowel and bowel movement in the toilet and stuff like that. That's not a healthy bowel movement. So I'm learning now that I didn't transfer it over into this whole raw and include more vegetables and whole foods and things like that. Oh, the bowel movements is hitting different, baby. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about solid it's it's hitting different Mm. and I'm like damn so have I been doing this the wrong way to hold I wouldn't say the wrong way but have I is there a better where I could have been going about this yeah I think you know it's just a part of the process you know part of the journey you learn as you go um especially when you're not taking a whole lot of advice from other people like me I don't I just kind of go on based on how I feel and yep. sound like that's what you've been through. Um, yep. You know what I would do Um, since you 22 days raw, you know what I mean? That's people that's underestimated. You know what I mean? 22 days without cooked food when cooked food is something that comforts you and something that's been a part of your life every single day. So to go 22 days without it, congratulations. That's big, big power to you. Um, I'm in the Orville Douglas Fruit Feast Challenge right now. Um, I'm going to tell people like this. One thing about the Orville Douglas Fruit Feast Challenge, one thing, Orville Douglas is so knowledgeable mm-hmm. when it comes to fruit eating that he almost make you not want to eat nothing else. Mm. That's, and it's very, it's the best 15 or $20 that a person can spend who trying to transition or who just want to cleanse because he keep it so simple. Mm-hmm. And I would encourage you for the next time he go just to get the expertise from Orville. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it yeah. next time. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. And it's, 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 it's really for people like us. It's like who on the verge or who is like brand new into eating this lifestyle it's like exactly what you need to hear from somebody who's been doing it that long. 
So uh, I just wanted to throw that in there with you being on that journey of 22 days raw. And you will see, like, it's really way more simple than we make it. Mm. And um, that's why I've been enjoying the feast of these last few days. So I wanted to talk about, uh, I'm glad you mentioned your juice feast and what you went through with that. How many days did you go on the juice, you said? Uh, 15 days. 15? Yeah. And ultimately, how did you feel afterwards? Like, what, what would you say, like, a general feeling? I felt very, 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 very light. My mind, my body, my soul, it felt like I, that's what I needed. That cleanse, that reset from no cooked foods. Because, you know, I was addicted to potatoes, bad, mm. white potatoes. I don't care, boiled, steamed saute whatever it ain't mm -hmm. even got to be fried I just needed potatoes and I would go I don't know every day five or six potatoes at a time mm. and then I was you know oh because I got my juice and I still got my fruits it's okay because mm -mm. mm -hmm. one thing it's gonna show when you're doing any type of cleansing or detoxing whether it's a fruit whether it's just juicing, whether it's just water, whether it's dry fasting, your um, digestive system, it's going to show what the problem is. Oh, yeah. And if you ain't eliminating properly, you got problems. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. That's what make that's what where I realize every time I start eating more foods because my diet is so imbalanced. And uh, that's what I'm working on now, just trying to balance my diet and uh, eat properly all the time. Yeah. Eat consistently and uh, regulate my diet. Yeah. And that's what the challenges is teaching me. So that's what the uh, January challenges kind of taught me. And I wanted, that's kind of like the best I've ever felt um, through those January mono eating challenges. So do you think people, do you think right now, like, first of all, let me ask you, did you feature any of your juices from your juice book in your feast? Um, uh, just the watermelon, the king. Um, of course I had like some watermelon juice, uh, mm -hmm. added some ginger in it and things like that. But as far as like, um, uh, the other ones, nah, not really. Because mm -hmm. my whole thing was because I knew that I was doing nothing but juicing. Mm -hmm. I could only really get what I knew was going to yield the most juices because I had to drink at least a gallon of juice a day. You know mm. what I'm saying? So we already know apples going to give you a lot of juice. Orange is going to give you a lot of juice. So to be honest, that's really, and then watermelon as well too, but yeah. it was kind of a struggle with the watermelon because it was like, you ain't really all that sweet. Then mm. you ain't seeded. Uh, but I got <laughs> so sick of the oranges and apples. It was like, damn, now I got to have a watermelon because at this point, I'm I'm done with the apples and oranges. It was it was becoming like gross. Right. Um. So I did go to the watermelon, and then I added like the pineapple into it just to give it some type of different flavor. So that got me through my last couple of days because I originally was supposed to go for thirty days. That was my original goal. Mm -hmm. I only made it to the fifteen days, and I was like, you know what? Just continue to rest out with just nothing but uncooked foods. You know what I'm saying? Lots of fruits, mm -hmm. lots of vegetables. And um, see how you start to feel with that, you know. Now, is my goal to become 100% raw? I don't know yet. I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to let go of cooked collard greens. Mm. I don't know if I'm ready to let go of chickpeas. You know what I'm saying? And wild rice. I just discovered that you can actually bloom wild rice and consume it raw. Mm. So I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But I am going to continue as long as I feel like continuing. Um, but it's kind of like, even then a pot of collard greens or turnip greens or something like that. I eat those like once a week, you know what I'm saying? But I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. I don't, I, as a, even as a fruitarian, I think um, there should be some type of balance. Um, Especially when you, we live in a world where cooked food is kind of like, you can't miss it. Especially where mm -hmm. we live at, we got families, you know what I mean? So 
I don't want to restrict myself to that way of thinking because people treat cooked food like it's some fucking disease or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I think if you had a diet of 80% fruit, uh, 10% greens, 10, 20% greens, and like uh, I think Yaki even mentioned, like even out of his diet, he eat 10% cooked food. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, I don't think it's, a bad thing i think it's, it's like a, a, a personal choice you know what i mean right. um i'll be missing cooked food a lot a lot so uh i definitely i told uh Lache that mm -hmm. after this feast challenge i'm gonna go i'm gonna eat me a cooked meal i you bet that I mean? is gonna be an experience for you because it's yes. been months that you ain't had nothing yes. cooked yes yes so i'm looking forward to it so mm. uh, I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. I'm going to implement it like once a month or something. You know what I'm saying? Right. I feel like when it comes to cooked food, it's not really so much about the cooked food. It's about what's in the cooked food. Right. What exactly is the cooked food? You know what I'm saying? Like, I know for a fact I cannot go back to the white potatoes because I'm I'm an addict. I can't sit here and be like, I'm just going to have one potato. Right. Right. For this week. You know what I'm saying? I don't have an in-between. I don't have a cutoff point. It's like once I get that hit, I want to keep going and keep going and keep going. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'll just have two potatoes the next day. I'll have, uh, I don't know how to stop because mm. it's so addictive. Yeah. I don't even need the butter on it. I don't even need the salt on it. I don't need the seasons on it. I can sit there and eat a plain ass potato and lots of them day after day after day after day after day mm -hmm. mm. yeah yeah it's not that hard it's not that hard <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, and when they say that food is a drug or worse than a drug it's true facts facts do you think the people around you now would trust you with helping them transition or helping them get help Oh, yeah, absolutely. You get a lot of people reaching out. Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of people reach out to me. A lot of people text my phone. Hey, what can I do for this? Hey, what can I do for this? But the thing is, is that what I need to get people to understand. There's no special formula. There's no special blend. There's no special nothing. It's literally fruits, primarily and then you are able to add in some of your fruit, your vegetables and le dark leafy greens and things like that. But just know that the dark leafy greens, if you're healing, it's going to slow down the progression of your healing. Mm. The fruits is where, where the detox is at, baby. So if you're trying to heal, you want your fruits as much as possible. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I get it. You want to have some type of vegetable. I get that. Yeah, add you in some, some salads and stuff like that. But primarily, make sure that it's fruits. Well, what kind of fruits? Anything that's sweet and watery. Yeah. Anything that's sweet and watery. So it don't matter. You, wanna, you want pears, you want apples, you want oranges, you want watermelon, you want berries. Yeah. Eat all that and enjoy it. But as yeah. far as um, special blends, hey, what can I mix with this to get this? And there's no special blend. There's nope. there's no special blend. Nope, not at all. So you so people do want help. People reaching out for help. I see you uh just uh made an acquisition uh that you posted on social media about buying some land. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. Which what's, what's your plans with that, and how did that come about? Okay, so that came about. I, the thought came across my mind months and months and months ago. And the only person that knew was my husband, of course. Mm. And I didn't know how I was going to get it. I didn't know how to even go about it because here in Michigan, uh, in Detroit, per se, they have something called the Detroit Land Bank, mm. where you're able to buy vacant lots um, and things like that, vacant homes, fix it up, blah, 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 or whatever. But the thing is, you have to be a Detroit resident and you have to be a homeowner. You can't have any type of liens on your house or no type of back taxes and things like that. So I'm like, oh, I don't know nobody who personally owns their home in the city. 
Mm. I live right down the street from the city. So I'm in East Point, but I can walk over a couple blocks and be right in Detroit. So Mm. I'm like, they don't have that here across eight mile. We're considered, you know, across eight mile. We're not the city anymore. So I'm like, fuck. So I made a post on Facebook, like any Detroit homeowners, you know what I'm saying? And just so happened, uh, a chick that had been following me I didn't know that we were friends on Facebook, but apparently she had been following me for a while. She ended up inboxing me and was like, hey, I'm a Detroit homeowner. I just bought a home off of Detroit Land Bank and I've been fixing it up and da 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 I got some land right behind me if you want to come take a look at it. So I'm like, bet. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay. Pulled up, met with her and everything. And we come to find out she's family with someone that we sold a rot roller to. Mm. wow so i'm like the 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 point i'm making is you guys have to network you gotta network that's what it's all about because you trying to keep it in the family and shit you're not going to get far you need to be reaching out to um strangers because those strangers become friends of friends of friends and we become family and that's how we start to build and um, she was like, okay, well, you know, here's the, here's the land. And it was a corner lot, literally right behind her home. Um, the, the area is not too bad. It's literally, I don't like to drive. And it's literally almost about five to seven minutes away from where I live at. Wow. So I'm like, this is right up the street, right up the alley. You know what I'm saying? I can see everything. Um, it doesn't seem like a, da- a super dangerous area. I was like, okay, so now what? We filed the application. She got approved. And now basically we get everything. The deed has to be transferred over to my name and things like that. But it's me and my husband's and we're going to clean it on up, put a fence around it, get the tree trees and everything chopped down and whatever needs to be done. But yeah, I plan on turning that into an actual community garden. Of course, first and foremost, I'm going to plant the stuff for my family. Right. You know what I'm saying? But mm. once it gets bigger and grows more and things like that i'm gonna put an llc on it reach out Mm. to certain farmers that's local and try to get some type of help and funding to increase it so that i'm able to provide local grown organic food for the community you know what Mm. i'm saying there's a lot of senior citizens around my area who don't have access to fresh greens and fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and things like that. I don't care if you just need a pack of black eyed peas. I don't care if you need a pack of whatever. I want to be able to be like, y'all come to Natural Hill in 313. Mm. Because that's what it's going to be called. And when I first started my juicing journey and things like that, and I was selling big and, you know, I named it Natural Hill in 313. Detroit area code is 313. Not knowing that years later, I was going to sit here and be able to actually get a piece of land, my first piece of land in Detroit. So I do plan on naming that Detroit, I'm a natural healing 313. Mm. And I want it to be, you know, I want people to be like, I'm pulling up to natural healing 313. Come, come meet me at natural healing. I want to start so much like live conferences where people pull up. And we all out there in the, in the in the garden at the farm. You know what I'm saying? And we're having yeah. those type of moments where we're learning to heal as one. We're learning. We're teaching. We're growing. We're networking. We got the kids out there playing and 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 picking flowers and roses and things like that. Like we don't got that shit around here. Mm-hmm. We don't. But mm-hmm. somebody got to be the one to bring it for the community. Yeah, yeah. Somebody got to be the one to make a change. And I want to be that one to sit here and be like, we did this. We made this happen. I want to be the one that wants to be on the news featuring natural healing 313. Come on out. You know what I'm saying? I want to be right. out there. And I, I got <laughs> selling my na- my natural fresh pressed juices and things like that. Setting up tables where every... I got, I literally have, I can't make this up. So I got my, you know, my little vision board and things like that. And I want to sit here and just incorporate that on Sundays. I want to have like a a farmer's market 
mm. where I'd have sat here and picked the picked the fresh peppers and uh, greens and whatever else, and I lay them all out on the table, and you can pull up and you're able to shop locally. You hear me? You're able to right. shop locally some fresh grown food that you know for a fact came from your city, your area code, your land, your soil. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's a huge difference where you get in locally grown food versus food that you don't know where the hell it was grown from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Completely different state, completely different country. It has touched several different hands. Yeah. Where you, you get something that's locally grown nine times out of 10, it has touched at least one or two hands. Much more healthier. No Much doubt. Much more healthier. No doubt at all. <laughs> we ain't we 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 ain't got that. No doubt at all. Oh. <clears throat> so yeah, so that's 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 my goal. That's my mission. And as of right now, like I know for a fact because the land has so much cleaning that needs to be done, so much um maintenance that needs to be done to it and things like that. And like I said, I gotta put up a fence. I gotta mm -hmm. get trees and stuff chopped down. That's money. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So for next year, I do want to start actually being able to plant in ground my seeds and things like that. But as of right now, I'm doing it at home. So I didn't already started my collard greens. I didn't started like three or four different type of peppers, tomatoes, mm. cucumbers. Uh, I started trying to grow last year, but last year was a challenge because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just know like I need to learn. Right, and I started right. with tomatoes and did it like in like the buckets or whatever. So this year I've started way ahead of time. Last year I started way too late. So this mm. year I knew to start ahead of time. So I didn't already started the seedlings and things like that. I'm waiting for them to sprout. Once they sprout, I do want to go ahead and put them into the ground uh, somewhere in my backyard away from my dogs and things like that. But the goal is to start growing my own food and feeding my family from my own hands from what mm. I grew you know what I'm saying and that's where I'm at right now and I don't plan on stopping that's lovely that's lovely I um I think definitely I'm gonna uh, do something this summer uh you could probably get together with with me too mm -hmm. and uh we are getting together with some uh farmers Mm -hmm. Um, in Indiana, Marcus know a couple in uh, Indiana. Um, I was looking for. I know one in Toledo. Uh, that I'm connecting with, maybe two. So we gonna uh go around. We are gonna get as many watermelons as we can on the uh on the price that's affordable for us, and we gonna go out and we uh setting up little watermelon stands on one day a week and we just go hand out watermelon juice and watermelon chunks and you know invigorate the community you know what i mean so that's what we're trying to set up we're trying to get that into work right now and this is talks with different farmers and stuff so yeah it'll be an opportunity to uh get something started there too yes that'd so. be awesome and then i seen too you got your shirts now to fruit up yeah, I'm gonna need yeah. one for yes. sure. Yes, yes. And then we, we definitely we all got to link up this summer. I don't this yes. summer, this late spring, whatever it is, we all got to definitely link up because we're not far from each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We so, ain't yeah. far from each other. Marcus was talking about coming in like April, I believe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're gonna link up, get together, come up with some ideas. You know, I think. um with people just watching, that's why I was asking, do people trust you or do people seek help from you? Mm -hmm. Because well, even last night when I was out and I'm looking at the family, the family, they having a good time being sick. You know what I'm saying? And when you bring this side of life to the people, it gives them a different feeling. But when you they see the energy that you put in and they see you want to put in the work, it makes them receive it a little better. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So that's what we're trying to do. I told people this summer, I, you know, I'm going to put all the energy that I've built up over the wintertime into the community. And uh, so that's why I like your idea of even buying the land and, you know, having a starting point. You know what I'm saying? It's really, really motivating and encouraging. So, and that's what kind of sparked my idea of doing the watermelon pop-ups in different neighborhoods on a uh, just one day a week. Because that's really all I got time for right now. But 
it, I think it'll be very beneficial to the neighborhoods. So. Oh yeah, and then just imagine a kid. Oh, it's yeah. watermelon. That's yeah. to to be honest, <laughs> and it's gonna sound kind of jacked up, but that's where it's all at. Our children, they the future. Facts. These the older people, the people that's our age, like come on now, we <laughs> there. <laughs> But we got younger children who needs a different type of upbringing, a different a different type of mentality and a different type of um, focus mm-hmm. outside of the hostess cupcakes and chips, chips and and cookies. And no, baby, eat this, eat this watermelon, <laughs> eat this Facts. watermelon, Facts. because if my nieces and nephews come over, they already know. I got an orange in there. I got mm-hmm. apples. They already know. Auntie Tiffany ain't got no no junk food. They already know. Right, right. Yeah. We set the foundation for everything. So, yeah, that's where we headed with it. And uh, uh, with the uh, online community, you know, there's a lot of pushback with, uh, I just want Joe to pay in on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, where we buy our foods from currently. Um if you watch me, which I'm pretty sure because you, you know you support me 100. percent right. One of my biggest messages been it don't matter, just eat the fucking food. Yep. Um, I get a lot of people, a lot of my uh, uh, get back, a lot of get back at me, even on different platforms, is uh, your fruit not organic, it's still poisonous, um, it's not benefiting you. What's your opinion on? just buying fruit from supermarkets or regular stores, Walmart, Kroger's and stuff like that. I mean, to be honest, I kind of do a comparison. Is the hamburger meat and the chicken and the fish going to be more beneficial or is me buying these fruits and vegetables from the, from the market going to be more beneficial? I mean, hell yeah, we would all love to eat organic and this, this, and that. But to be honest, how the hell do you even know that it's 100% organic? Right. Because I feel like shit, at the end of the day, they still aren't working together. We don't know what's what unless we actually grow it our damn selves, period. Fact. That's a fact. So So I'm going to eat what I can eat and live on how I'm able to live and and still maintain some type of leverage because you sit here and you want to put put a label, get this organic because it got the damn label on it. Mm-hmm. Who cares? I mean, we care, but who cares? Are you about to sit here and, and give me some money towards some organically grown stuff? Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm just, I'm so tired of the argument. Like, my message, I'm, I. That's why I stopped talking to certain people. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm on a. I'm at a point now where, if you don't get it, you don't get it. Because if you right. arguing against what we're doing and you see the results, then that means you don't want to get it. You know what I mean? So we leave those people behind. And I'm and I'm to the point now where, I have to focus on the people who really want to move forward. And uh, that's all it is. So. Um, with that being said, do you think the community that we're in, um, do you think is room for growth? Like, do you think there's a missed message and what we're promoting? Like, because a lot of people say, like, uh, y'all don't have no balance. Y'all not, y'all, uh, not eating the right amount of nutrition. Y'all too skinny. Do you think it's like... Uh, what what do you think about that message uh from people? Um it's kind of like I get what they're saying, but at the same time, when you I believe that they're basing us off of how we used to look. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? How we were so much more heavier. So they felt like a lot of times they feel like that's more healthier that's the healthier look because you got that fat on your body you got that fat on your bones you know what I'm saying they feel like that that's more of the healthier look and then once you start to slim down and you lose all of the fat because you're no longer consuming it consuming the fat make it make sense what do what the hell do you think gonna happen Hmm. 
Yeah. What mm. What do you think is going to happen? But mm. at the same time, it's kind of like, am I doing this to be accepted, or am I doing this to for myself? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And once you kind of, once you accept your reasoning and your why, and you're a hundred percent comfortable with it, it's it's kind of your opinion becomes irrelevant. Because I can sit here and I can tell you how I feel about you and you're not going to like it. (laughs) You're not going to like it, but I'm pretty sure if I was to sit here and consume more nuts, more avocados, um, more hemp seeds, more things like that, I'm pretty sure I would be able to pick up more fat on my body and things like that. Mm-hmm. So it's not like we don't know what the fuck to do. We know what to do. We just choose not to do it. It's all about personal preference and what we choose to do. And it's all about us listening to our bodies. You know what I'm saying? We can't help it that we hooked on fruit. We can't help that. We can't help the fact that fruits are purposely very low in calories, but high as hell in nutrition. So... Right. If you don't believe that, I don't know what to tell you, sweetheart. Yeah, but I, I, I know that, what I believe. Mm-hmm. I only I only brought up that point because sometimes, even in my own mind, you know, I get to a point where I feel like sometimes I feel like I'm doing too much. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm restricting myself too much. You know, it becomes like you in imprisoning yourself, and. That's why I told you next month, I think I'm going to eat a cooked meal because I don't want to feel like, um, like, I don't want to feel like I'm thinking about it too much or I'm above it or, you know what I'm saying? Like, Hmm. it's just like, it's a mental thing. So um, with that, with somebody right now that's sitting at the house who is living like us, like Tiff and Bob, the old. Like they trying to trans, they are not even trying to transition, but they should be trying to transition. What would you tell them? Like, if they down and out, they alcoholics, whatever. Like, what would you tell them? And uh, the importance of what they should be doing right now. I would tell them. I would first ask, "How do you feel?" Hmm. And depending on what they tell me, I would take it from there. So if they tell me I, I feel good, I feel great, this is this, I'm going to leave it alone. But if you sit here and you tell me, I don't know, my back been bothering me. I keep getting these headaches. I don't know. My blood pressure keep elevating. My iron is extremely low. This is and that. Then that's when I would sit here and I would offer, hey, how about you cut this out and incorporate it with this? You know what I'm saying? Mm. How about you try this smoothie for breakfast instead of your typical bacon and eggs or whatever it is that you eat in? Start with that and let me know how you feel. You know what I'm saying? I would, I'm more of a, I know that you're more of a hard ass when it comes to shit like that. You like, stop eating that shit, put the shit down. You killing yourself. Me, I'm more of the softy because I know how it is trying to battle Number one, an addiction. Number two, an illness. You know what I'm saying? So I take more of the gentle approach with things. And I'm just like, well, I give suggestions. Well, how about you try this smoothie? Just blend you some strawberries. You know what I'm saying? It don't have to be nothing major. Blend you some strawberries. And then after that, if you still feeling full, uh, you know, hungry, eat you a banana. After mm-hmm. that, if you still feeling hungry drink you some water you know what i'm saying if that's still not satisfying continue to eat the fruits until you feel satisfied if you still feel like you're missing some more get you a big old salad people call it rabbit food if you want to call it rabbit food fuck it call it rabbit food just eat it you know what i'm saying and don't do not eat the stay away from the bread hell even if you sit here and you just cut the bread out you will still notice a huge difference you know what I'm saying? If you cut that damn bread out and de- have you a deconstructed burger, wrap it in the lettuce or whatever the case may be, even that's a huge step because bread is highly addictive as well, too. Facts. 
all that wheat and stuff like that, the pasta, all the rice. We question the fruits and the vegetables, but you don't question the rice. You don't question nothing. Like you don't question that. The reason why you like you said, I have like a hard approach to people. Mm -hmm. And I think both I think both approaches are needed. I think your approach needed. I think my approach is needed. If it wasn't, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have the approaches. You know what right. I'm saying? So, but do they work? Sometimes, yes. The people who go navigate towards what they need will, will follow you or walk with Naturally. you. Naturally. Yep. But my problem be the motherfuckers who is always commenting on shit that's not doing the right thing. Like it's clear evidence of you on your page posting things that's negative and eating bad foods but you want to come over here and talk about what we're doing when we're trying to pe put people in the right position to eat right so that's the problem i have with people mm. and i'm real tough on people who do that mm -hmm. those are what i call the 85 percent. you know what i'm saying they not gonna make it that shit is written down and those mm -hmm. are the people who come on your post and tell you what to do and they're not doing it themselves yep see yeah now that i don't experience that anymore um now when i did when i was on a juice cleanse i did have to block two two females that day mm. um because i'm like who the fuck are y'all where did y'all come <laughs> from you don't comment on nothing else and they're like uh do it this way and oh you shouldn't be doing it this way and da 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 first of all we're first and foremost we're not even friends it didn't even say like add friend i mean it said add friends so we're not yeah. even friends you just following me waiting for you to come i feel like you was just waiting for the moment for you to be like "Ooh, this is my time to explain my expertise <laughs> nobody asked you for your expertise okay. i reached out to certain people that i wanted to i'm grown at the end of the day and if i had a question for you i know how to come to you as a woman and be right. like listen I need help with this or listen, what's your opinion? I don't mind paying. So that's not an issue, baby. But my whole thing is I didn't ask you. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you come on my page and you put this long paragraph explaining basically what you would do. We're not, I'm not you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't ask you for your opinion. So I didn't even know how to go about it. I didn't know to either just hit them with the okay I didn't know about to explain myself because I'm sick of doing that shit. Yeah. I feel like I shouldn't have to explain myself why I'm doing it this way. You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't have to do all that. So yeah. I just was like, mm, block. I don't even know who you are. I don't even know where you came from. Block. Block. I, I love that. I do that all day long. All day long. I don't ask for your opinion. I'm not interested. So, um, uh, yeah, that's why, you know what, though, that's that's why I fuck with you. That's why I love you, because, you know, you, uh, you what you've been through and how you explain it is no nonsense. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even with your going back to how you uh, dealt with the doctors and stuff who were naysayers. So uh, that's big ups. And uh, once you see your growth, your growth is, you know, exponential. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's is bound to get bigger you know what i'm saying and you know you just i think your story your influence and your intent is what's gonna carry you you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so and your intention is you know what i mean it's to do the best for yourself your family and your people and uh I, I just i'm I'm so happy to be a part of your success your 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 friendship your story all of that so um oh, i definitely yeah. Um, you want to tell everybody your social media, tell everybody, you know, uh, all everything, anything else you want to say about anything, you know, you got the floor before we get up out of here. Yeah. So I just want to let everybody know to do what's best for you. Learn your body. And go with the flow. Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't make it overcomplicated because we tend to do that shit. We feel like we have to do it this way because this person is doing it that way. And it don't work like that. Mm. It don't work like that. Some days I might want a smoothie for breakfast. Some days I might want a juice for breakfast. Either way it go, I bet you I'm still eating fruit for breakfast. <laughs> right. And that's what that's what that's what it's all about at the end of the day. You might want the whole just to to chop up some fruit and just eat it. Regardless of what, you we all need to be breaking our fast with 
some type of fruit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If Definitely. you're going to break your fast with something, break it with some type of nutrition for yourselves to kickstart your body, to give you that boost of energy, to keep you going and uh, motivated throughout the day. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That that the first thing that you put into your body upon rising should play a huge impact on how your day is going to continue throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to say that uh, my social media, my Facebook is Tiff Moore. Um, I do have a personal group on there as well, too. It's called Let's Get Healthy and Stay Focused. Um, yeah. That group is growing and I'm very happy because we're starting to get a little more engagement. And it once is, again, so. it's yeah. Once again, yeah. it's not about being perfect because I know y'all ass is watching. <laughs> that's my biggest thing you know what I'm saying I know that yeah. you're watching and yeah. one day sooner or later you gonna jump on board and you're not gonna be shy and you're gonna be like y'all I did my first three days of no cooked food that's what it's all about you know what I'm saying yeah. I'm gonna keep 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 promoting what the real deal is from personal experience and then allow you to make that decision if you want to try it your own damn self you know what I'm saying right. um my Instagram is Tiff underscore more underscore. And my TikTok, uh, I ain't got no TikTok. <laughs> I ain't got no TikTok. But yeah, uh, Facebook is where it's at. And um, Instagram as well, too. I post somewhat on Instagram as well. But yeah, yeah you guys uh, stay out the way. Stay blessed. Stay focused. And keep your mind on the prize. Make sure that you know your why. Stick with it. And don't let nobody change your mind. Once you become basically your own person your own self-advocate and things like that and you learn who you truly are as a human you become unstoppable Mm, beautiful and nobody can put fear in your heart no not a doctor not a a guru or whatever they call themselves nobody can put fear in your heart because you know you at the end of the day and that's what it that's what it's all about it ain't about being cocky ain't about you thinking that you better than somebody and this this, and that no it's all about that self-confidence and being unstoppable and nobody can prove you wrong. until you can prove me wrong about myself and my body then we can talk other than that don't sit here and try to put fear into my heart because of what you fear because hmm. that's how i'm looking at it that's what you fear i don't fear that so yeah yeah that fear that fear is a motherfucker boy, it is that it fear. is fear mm. yeah so with that being said oh man i appreciate you You know, um, this is not going to be the last time, you know, we're going to have some more discussions. And also the group also, like you mentioned, has been growing real good. It's been a lot of activity inside. I'm real happy with that progress in that group. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So everybody join. We're going to put that all underneath here and all your uh, information anyway. I forgot I'm going to do all that anyway. So awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, I appreciate you. Uh, You've been great. And uh, till next time. All right. Be safe out there. Fruit up. up. All right. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. For sure.